Thank you. This is just a disclaimer that this is intended for educational purposes only. And the statements and facts and opinion uh, in expressed in this presentation uh, are solely mine and may not um, represent uh, my company or the position of, of MSD. Thank you. Next slide. So integrated risk management um, is a very interesting topic. Um, if you go to the Gartner um, definition, you can see that uh, there is a, an extensive definition regarding what integrated risk enabled uh, risk aware culture that uses practices and processes to make decisions and improve performance based on holistic reviews of their risks. So one can say that IRM is based on the QRM principles, quality risk management, but it goes beyond just product quality and patient to identify and manage end-to-end -end product risk. Of course, always uh, focusing on ensuring that we have a reliable supply and compliant supply to our patients. So similar to how one would establish a quality risk management program, um, IRM aims to have standard process to aggregate, collect all the risks, track them, manage them throughout the whole company. It allows our decision makers, who typically are senior leadership, a visibility to risks in order to prioritize uh, mitigations. With standard process comes, of course, standard use of technology. So one risk to allow decision makers, again, senior management, access to a one-stop shop view of their potential risk across all the value chain. Government that IRM must provide mitigations and escalations as needed. Now, in this presentation, we will explore further the concept of IRM and how it links to other risk programs and its benefits. Next, please. So, this is um, a slide that summarizes what IRM is. IRM drives consistency. So first, we as the pharma industry, we need con consistency on how we view and we discuss our risks in our company. Understand before they materialize, of the risks and the kind of actions we are taking to remediate. All of this need to be understood and need to be visible. Sharing of supply um, we have multiple sites, multiple business areas. We are operating in and bridge risk information across our full network, helping us identify risks that may not have been uh, so visible. Next, please. Right. ICHQ9 diagram. Concepts of risk assessment, communication. One can build an IRM model based on the QRM model. So you can see on the left hand side, I just took the similar model with the same element as the uh, QRM model from ICHQ9. Now, 
<clears throat> for initiation and strategy, if you're looking at your left-hand side, the IRM diagram, we're looking at developing, deploying, and implementing a framework uh, for continuous improvement through effective governance and ownership of risk. Now, the second element is the risk assessment. Same as, again, as Q9, we're looking at risk assessment. We're going to identify, analyze, evaluate, and prioritize existing controls that we have potential risks. Then risk review, the effectiveness of our controls, the new controls that we put in place, are they really effective in managing our risk? Then we have the accountability piece. Who's accountable? Have been um, Now for risk communication, again, timely tracking and communicating of risks to decision makers and shareholders, I mean stakeholders, it is part of uh, the visibility piece. And technology is again an enabler. Um, we having one tool, one system, a digital solution to allow consistency in risk reporting is also extremely a value. Thank you. Um, in quality risk management, as you know, the risk assessments start with a risk question. So same here again for the integrated risk management. What apply continuity? Um, so it's drug shortage, right? So what could result in a potential supply continuity risk to the patient from both the strategic and operational level. So it doesn't just pull from um, strategic risks, right? It also pulls from the operational risks. So an example of an operational risk is quality risk management. So we need to understand the full product. Uh, uh, portfolio. So IRM combines the strategic risks with the operational risk risk profile. Okay. So again, we're looking at a full product risk profile. Next, please. Thank you. So how do we bring all this together. Tools for looking and understanding at risk. So you use different methodology, you use different tools, different risk criteria, risk tolerance matrices, uh, you use different communication mechanisms, right? And Although there is no one size fits all tool, right? We somehow need to ensure that we have a consistent uh, product portfolio risks with senior management and engaging them in leadership, um, decision making, uh, in strategic risk management activity is imperative for any program to be successful and especially for an IRM program. Next, please. So we need consistency. If you remember from the previous slides, we said that we need consistency. Now, um, 
Environment Risk Program at sites. So these are kind of typical environmental health and safety, quality risk management, tech transfer, um, etc. Right. So and every, each and every one of these programs have different risk scoring criteria, as you can see, different dashboards of how to present the risks. So what we need, right, is consistency. How all these risks together, how are they viewed? How are they escalated to management so they can understand the full picture? So we need a consistent language, including standard definitions. Um, this model, um, is kind of a representation of what our companies look like. So we have our own tools, our own dashboards, our own risk register. But under the umbrella of consistency, IRM will translate and standardize the risk language across the company. So our senior management is able to see all the risks across the value chain. Next, please. Um, so again, in the spirit of understanding risks, causes, and mitigation, IRM can give us a unified view of supply continuity risks to allow us to understand those risks and take action. And all these risks that you saw from these previous dashboards, previous risk uh, register, will all feed into a single risk register. And that risk register is updated and reviewed, managed and um, for uh, the senior leadership um, to be able to make decisions. So with that said, that doesn't mean that you have to change what you do now or uh, transition into this standard IRM tool immediately. What you can do is take those risks and translate them into um, IRM risks. And we have an example at the end of um, the slides, right? Next, please. Thank you. Um, so again, for every program, and I'm a big believer in, in this uh, standard scoring is highly, uh, uh, that you have a, a, a standard scoring, whether it's in quality risk management or environmental health and safety risk assessment, it's, it, it's really important that you are looking at the same risks. When you, you may have different definition, like we, like I said before, for each of your risk program, but when they all feed into that one IRM risk register, you need one standard scoring criteria. Okay. Um, if we ask what event could result in potential supply continuity risks to patient from both strategic and operational level, we're looking at this translation, we're looking at these standard scoring criteria um, to determine uh, uh, or to understand these questions, right? So your response plan based on these decision matrices will strengthen your strategy for product supply uh, to patients. So again, um, standard scoring criteria, whether IRM, QRM, EHNS, um, or any type of risk model are essential for you to be able to reduce subjectivity in understanding and managing risks. Next, please. Um, sharing of risk, this is the third element um, that I'd like to discuss, risk communication, right? So very timely tracking and communicating risks. So um, it's the sharing and, and the risk communication right, requires effective governance models. So we drive accountability. Uh, who is responsible for what? Um, as you can see in this example that I provided here, these are typical roles um, that we find in most of our companies uh, from senior leadership, executive leadership, global leadership, 
um, product leads, site leadership, they all have a role in understanding um, or identifying, understanding, evaluating, and communicating these risks. And you can see the pyramid, how that communication and that accountability uh, goes um, up the uh, pyramid. Next, please. Right. So this is an example of how, for uh, when you're like performing a quality risk management or um, risk assessment, you're able to um, look at these risk assessment and say, okay, which one is actually a quality risk uh, risk, and which one is a uh, integrated uh, risk. Which we From risk register. Okay, so um, for the okay, excuse me, I lost connection here for a second. Um, right. So for integrated risk management, um, IRM is focusing on any risk that could impact a product continuity supply. But QRM specifically focuses on product quality and patient safety risks. Uh, both of them, right, QRM risks that could impact IRM uh, or could impact product quality uh, continue, uh, continuity of supply will feed into IRM. So our first uh, example is looking at risk number one. Uh, we're looking at the risk score and risk reduction action and we say, okay, is there product quality impact? And we say no. Okay, so this is a supply reliability IRM risk register. Now for risk number two, we're looking at product quality impact. We say yes. And then we ask, is there supply reliability impact? And if the answer is no, then this risk stays on the quality risk management risk register uh, and, and is managed uh, through that process. Now there are risks that are both um, product quality impact and they also cause supply reliability. Uh, impact, right? So they go on to the quality risk management uh, risk register, and then there is a linkage. There is that translation risk management risk register. So that example, you can have um, your risks from uh, environmental health and safety also linked to IRM or translated to IRM. Um, could increase prioritizing the risk reduction um, beyond the QRM prioritization. So if your risk is prioritized in QRM as, um, you know, like second on the list, uh, looking at the uh, supply uh, reliability impact for IRM, it might uh, push that quality risk management uh, activity uh, up the, the prioritization um, uh, list based on the uh, supply risk. Decrease QRM prioritization of product quality uh, driven action. Next, please. All right. Um, so benefits of IRM. So we have real time product knowledge. Our decision makers, senior leaders can make uh, their decision based on data. Protect uh, our reputation and integrity with our uh, stakeholders, shareholders, and our um, regulatory uh, bodies, right, that govern us. Uh, we're also looking at improving a product pipeline and development of future 
uh, product because now we understand our risks and we understand the lessons that we have learned from the, the risks associated with the current product and how we were able to materialized into real issues. Um, another important element is for portfolio budget based on a share Uh, a portfolio so we really understand where is the company going what should we invest in um, etc okay and this is all again for ensuring that we have um, no drug shortage we have continuous supply to our patient uh, and of course while ensuring compliance and um, focusing on uh, product quality Thank you so much for um, inviting me to speak. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, let me know.